Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating some do-it-yourself custom sentiment cards using some awesome alphabet dies, letter dies from Hero Arts with some new July 2024 release products like stencils, stamps, and dies. So if you want to see how you can create these awesome slimline sentiment cards, stay tuned. We are going to start by building our own pattern paper. So I talk about this a lot, but I absolutely, absolutely love creating my own either backgrounds for cards. We're going to do both today um, as far as backgrounds and creating a pattern paper for die cutting our letters. So that's what we're going to actually do first with this awesome new stencil. This is from some of the extraordinary extras for July. These are part of the full Hero Arts catalog, so available anytime, not a monthly kit or anything like that. This is the Pebbles and Stones stencil. Now, I want to mention it is called Pebbles and Stones, but kind of my thinking with this is we are kind of going with the Pebble Stone look first using Sand and Cup of Joe Hero Arts inks. And I am simply using a stamp wheel to hold my stencil and paper in place, my favorite Simon Says Stamp blending brush, and then some inks. And I had pulled more than what I actually ended up using. You'll see I have some caramel ink out. I'm not using that today. We're going to stick with Sand and Cup of Joe. I went all over with the light color first, then I'm blending in the dark. Then we're going to remove the stencil and go all over the panel again with the light color ink to kind of fill in those white areas. I don't want there to be a white background for this particular design. And this would make a beautiful card background just as it is. No additional inking necessary. I'm also using my favorite new Hero Arts microfiber cloth. That's that black cloth in the upper left corner of the screen, as well as I will be using some Hero Arts stamp cleaner to clean my stencil in between color changes and to clean my stamp wheel mat. Now, I have mentioned this before, but my stamp wheel mat or grip mats mats that I use inside my Misty, all of them are stained and that is okay. That means they are well loved and well used. They still function perfectly well, but you're going to see that brown ink did stain my stamp wheel mat. I do like to mention that. I know some don't like to have staining, but for me, it is simply a sign that it is well loved and used, as I mentioned. I did try a little archival cleaner. I don't really think that worked any better, but I did want to mention it. So I am going to just move my stamp wheel out of the way for a minute. We're going to just do a quick spritz all over my stencil and using the microfiber cloth, we are doing a quick clean for a color change. I often love to create multiple cards in one sitting, but I very, very rarely create the exact same card. I generally like to do some color change or a few um, embellishment changes, etc. Today, even though I'm using a lot of the same components, ideas, style of card, we're going to do a slimline card, there are distinct changes. Each card is going to feature a different greeting, each card features a different colorway, and each card features a different stamp die combo. So even though they're very similar, they're different, and I love that. As I mentioned, this is the Pebbles and Stones stencil. However, my thought process for using the mist and the nautical colors for this background is that I do think that it could resemble the water in or the, you know, how the water looks when you're looking down through it into like a pond or a pool even or whatever with that design from like pool liners. I know that our fish probably wouldn't be in a swimming pool, but that's kind of my thought. And so I love it. I like the design just as a beautiful, you know, kind of um, design for a background. And that was my thought process with using the mist and nautical. So it doesn't, even though it's called pebbles and stones, I think you really could do this out of any color and just have a very cool, you know, kind of basic 
background with these really neat designs. So that was what I did here. Again, mist first, then nautical, and then over the entire thing with mist once I removed the stencil. Now I'm going to take the Novel Pros Hero Arts text background stamp in my Misty. I've removed the grip the grip mat insert and I have placed just a regular sticky mat inside. I have some white pigment ink here that I'm going to ink up Novel Pros and we are going to stamp over each of these with the white pigment ink. Now I do want to mention that these on their own would be amazing backgrounds. I really was looking to create something different today. Look how awesome that looks. I always, you guys know this, love a little text background over my stenciling or stamping or whatever it might be. I just think it adds a lot to the finished card. So I'm doing this for both of my backgrounds. What I have done here is I have created pattern paper. I have created my own custom pattern paper. Next, I am gonna take some of the Uncharted Mariner Distress Spritz from Tim Holtz and lightly spritz over my blue background with that one. Over the brown background, we are using Walnut Stain. And Walnut Stain is definitely dark, but it really, really works with this. And I love that the spritzes give a very minimal amount of splatter spatter to your cards. So um, there is kind of my thought process. I laid out my stamps. I wanted to see, do I like kind of, you know, are these the stamps I'm going to like on these, etc. I am going to do all my stamping at once. And both of the stamp sets I'm using today are new for July 2024. They are the Tropical Fishes and the nautical messages and both very unique very different from each other one is obviously a lot of fish um, the other is anchors and starfish and ropes and things like that so they will create completely different cards i am going to place all of those in my um, in my misty with another piece of nina 110 pound weight smooth white cardstock. Using Hero Arts Intense Black Ink, I am going to stamp my images and then we're going to color them in with Olo markers. The Olo markers I am using will be listed and linked uh, listed, yes, and then a link to Olo down in the description below if you're interested. Um, I will also list them out on the blog post that coordinates with this or with this video. Absolutely amazing. Now I do, I did stamp a few things that I am not going to use. I will try to cut those out of the video. And that is the rope with the little, the long rope with the little anchor. I did not realize there wasn't a coordinating die for that. And that's actually, it ends up being okay. Um, I kind of like how I end up using that stamp and set instead, but I did stamp you know, stamp it, color it. And then I looked at the dies and I was like, ah, oh, dang, <laughs> I could have got my scan and cut out, but it's in the basement. I didn't want to. So I came up with an alternate idea that ended up working better. I love when I am forced to reevaluate and come up with a different idea. I think sometimes that's when the better ideas come out. Um, so I'll show you that here in a little bit. I will say coloring the coral, not my favorite. I may have gotten out of the lines a little bit. I don't think ultimately it matters that much, but it was slightly frustrating. I kind of wish I hadn't colored that first. Uh, so coloring the rest of the images was much more enjoyable than this one since I kind of struggled with this particular image. That's not a big deal. Probably a finer tip marker would be a little bit better for that. But again, I think ultimately it is fine. I just wanted to mention that. So I am trying to leave the caps of my markers on the screen as well, just for easy reference. You can obviously use any kind of marker or coloring medium that you like for this. The other suggestion I have for you when coloring is perhaps to pull up, you know, um, a Google search for fish, tropical fish in this case, and go with that as 
if you need help with or inspiration for coloring your fish. Um, often I will do that with any kind of set if I am struggling and I really need, you know, some sort of an idea of where to go from there. We're going to continue on coloring. I know that um, I have sped it up a little bit just to save time. Please remember you can always speed up or slow down the video here on YouTube by clicking that little gear button and choosing whatever speed you like for the playback speed. What I want to talk about while I'm coloring here is the idea of letting your images in this case dictate the design of the card. I had kind of originally gone through several different ideas coming to the ultimate card design. One of them was using those backgrounds we've created at the beginning of the video with the new pebbles and stone stencil, just using the backgrounds as is, maybe trimming them down a little bit, but basically having those as the background of the card. But I had in my looking through my hero art stash working for the on these cards i remembered i had the letters fancy dies from hero arts these have been out for a while and my personal preference when making cards like 98 percent of the time <laughs> is to mix and match and so that is what i decided to go with today and go to something in my stash, mix it with something brand new, and see what I could come up with. And I love the size and scale of these letter fancy dies. They make it so you can customize, create your own sentiment um, on cards. You can use them in your art journaling, your scrapbooking, home decor, whatever the case may be. They are a nice, significant size. So I really let not only the images, but the size and scale of the letters dictate the direction of my card. I have not created a slimline card in a while, I realized as I was creating this. I don't always think every card lends itself necessarily to slimline, but some do. And in this case, the sentiments I wanted to use for my cards um, on the kind of underwater fish one, I wanted to use hello and combine it with your fantastic from that tropical fishes stamp set. And then for the nautical messages card, I knew I wanted to use sending a wave, but I was inspired by one of the stamped greetings in that set called Ahoy. And I thought, oh my gosh, how cute would Ahoy be die cut from letters instead of stamping that tiny sentiment. So I really let those kind of things influence the design of my card. And that is how I came to my greetings. Hello is nice and basic. I mean, we use hello a lot, but it, it, it does fill in the space nicely. And I thought it would really allow a nice, um, a nice real estate to tuck in all of my tropical fish and, and coral and all of that good stuff and kind of become part of the design, but still the sentiment of the card. Now, as far as Ahoy, same thing. We can tuck the ropes and anchors and the wheel and everything into the letters for that as well. So that was, at this point, once I kind of came to that conclusion, the rest was super easy. It was basically just building the design and coming to the finished project. And you can create your own kind of sentiments. Even if you don't have this particular die cut sentiments set last month, and I am going to link to that right here. I created some cards for Hero Art with Hero Arts products, but I used a different die set that is much smaller. You can do that as well. Um, so I am going to link to that one for different ideas, more inspiration, especially if you don't have this particular set. I think that the other 
die set would lend itself to more of a traditional A2 card, that four and a quarter by five and a half inches, etc. Um, just something to keep in mind as you're working and building your own do-it-yourself sentiment cards. You don't always have to just stick to the sentiment included in the stamp set or the die set. Maybe you want to build your own with alphabet or letter dies. Okay, so now I have my dies lined up on my custom pattern paper I made, and I am going to die cut those. Now, unfortunately, my camera died as I was stamping the background for this panel. So this panel measures three by eight, and that is so that it will fit on the three and a half by eight and a half slimline card base. I stamped that rope design that I talked about earlier all over the background, with the sand color ink. I ink blended the sand ink all the way around the edges of my panel. So it gave it that really beautiful distressed look, but I kept only to the sand color. I didn't pull in the cup of joe. And then I spritzed the whole thing with the walnut stain distress spritz. Then I've die cut my letters from that pebbles and stone pattern paper we created at the beginning of the video. And I've also die cut these Hero Arts letters from some ground coffee lawn fawn cardstock. It's a nice brown cardstock. And I am slightly offsetting the letters so that they have this beautiful dark shadow. If you are an OG and have been here since my scrapbooking days, you know that I have done this for years and years with my die cuts, um, especially my die cut greetings, because it really makes the, you know, either the title of the scrapbook page, or in this case, the sentiment on the card pop. It helps it stand out from the background, especially these are kind of busy because again, imagine that's just pattern paper. It is pattern paper that we created ourselves and die cut our greeting. So now that I have the shadows built, the other thing is we're going to pop up the letters with foam adhesive. Now, before I do that, I kind of want to lay everything out, get a very good visual idea of how it's going to go, and where am I going to stamp the remainder sentiment for my card. I want to add sending a wave. Now, I could have lined this up in my Misty. I had an acrylic block out already, and using some Cup of Joe ink, I am stamping it off on scrap, um, a scrap piece of paper first, just to make sure I'm gonna get a good impression. And then I'm just going to stamp that with my acrylic block. Just right there, again, in that dark brown ink, it looks perfect. So it's a hoy, sending a wave. I thought that was really cute. Now we're going to grab all of the images for this. One additional thing that I did do, and you will see this as I finish this particular card, is I stamped the small starfish that comes in this set two more times, colored it quickly, die cut it, and we're going to include extras. I have two anchors, the anchor that we colored in and then the anchor that's more of the outline. And I'm just setting it there for a minute. That's actually not where it's going to land. Uh, we're going to, you know, move it around a bit. We're also kind of changing the height of our letters. I'm not lining them straight up across. You could if you wanted to, but I really like how they barely overlap and they just kind of go at different heights across our panel. They look amazing like this, and it really gives us that ability to tuck that sentiment underneath the letter O. It kind of gives it that natural little spot. It also just adds a lot of interest to the design. Now, I did not get this lined up very well, I see, so I am carefully rearranging, adjusting, whatever you want to call it, uh, my letters. Now, because I did use a text background stamp to die cut the letters, I was very conscious and very aware when I did my die cutting. Not that you're really going to see it a lot, but I did try to die cut my letters the right direction so that the text, like I said, you're not going to read it, but I didn't want the text upside down, basically. And let's add our Y here. I do recommend laying out your letters ahead of time so you get your spacing correct and you don't, you know, end up too far one way or another. You could start in the center 
at, at hearing your letters, that might be easy as well. But when you're using large size letters and you have a limited amount of real estate, I do recommend uh, making sure you lay it all out ahead of time. This is some natural lawn trimmings twine. I am going to thread it through this particular anchor. It does die cut the hole in the top and I just thought that was a fun little effect. I also love the browns of this card. I don't always, I, I am not your neutral girl. I, I am a colorful kind of uh, crafter for sure. So, uh, but this really works. I would love receiving this card. It is beautiful. So, um, Again, let the products kind of dictate the direction of the design. I am attaching my elements now with a combination of glue, foam adhesive, whatever it is. Some of the elements overlap things that are already popped up, some don't. And so I really want to just kind of play around with it. I don't want to cover up my greeting. I kind of couldn't figure out how I had that anchor. <laughs> uh, obviously, it was a lot of uh, trial and error with that, but we get we get there eventually. It's fine. I love the little knotted rope here. And again, I'm overlapping and tucking these so that it looks like this grouping that was kind of just, you know, tossed over time into a pile, I suppose. And then here we're tucking in starfish again. And then I will go ahead and stamp and color those remaining two and pop those in here in just a minute. Playing around, I knew I wanted to add another little, you know, set of images, but I just needed to figure out exactly where those were going to go. I kind of like them here. It doesn't take away from the greeting. So there is our anchor. And I like the height differences as well. Here is our white slimline card base. Simon Says Stamp sells slimline card bases, mini slimline card bases, and of course A2 top folding and side folding. Highly recommend. I love pre-scored and pre-cut cards and be leaving that nice border all the way around, trimming our background to three by eight, leaves us with a nice white framed up piece. I've added those starfish and now I have some of these clear drops from Simon Says Stamp, kind of like bubbles almost. I played around with several different ideas, but the clear drops were the winner for this one. I just felt like they worked with the design and didn't take away or pull in another color that didn't work with the rest of these images. I'm gonna add a few more of these. I like having a little bit of embellishment and our Ahoy card featuring the nautical messages bundle is done. Okay, so here is how I created that first background, but I'm going to use different images. Full disclosure, I am leaving this in because this is something that did not work. I thought it would be cute to have some fish in the background of this card, like we have the rope and anchors in the background of the first card. The problem is, is the mist ink quite a bit softer and lighter than the sand ink was for the previous card. Now you can still see some of them in the background of this, and I actually did not restamp it because I ended up liking it, but if you want them to show up more, I would recommend a darker ink, maybe even the nautical ink if you wanted to, so that you can kind of see like these schools of fish floating in the background. Because once I add the mist ink and blend the panel, I really feel like most of the fish kind of get lost. But again, this one's a little busier than the previous card, so I did not redo it. I made that decision, I, I knew immediately that a lot of this was not going to get, you know, show up really. And I thought, you know what, it's okay. Especially when we spritz the background with the Uncharted Mariner to kind of give it that more of that water look. I just felt like, you know, my stamping was for naught, but that's okay. <laughs> so here is a background. You can see that they're just really too light, but then we're going to add in our uh, spritzes there and we are going to die cut our sentiment. Believe it or not, I was able to get all five letters out of this A2 panel. So I'm going to show you how. I am laying out my letters and I am really looking at this 
and I had to think about it to make the most of the panel so that I could get all five and didn't have to create another piece of paper to die cut my last letter. Because remember, I didn't exactly intend to go this direction when I started. I was just creating backgrounds. So we are gonna die cut these four letters, then we'll die cut the remaining letter L from that space left over. And just like we did for the last card, we are gonna create some shadows for this using nautical. I love the name, it works really great with our Tropical Fishes stamp set, uh, the nautical cardstock from Hero Arts. So you can see I've got my last letter L, I am going to tape that in place in that remaining little piece left and run it through my die cut machine. And there we go. I was able to get all of these letters from that one panel. Now I am going to glue, I've glued my letters to the nautical cardstock. I did that off camera and we are adding foam adhesive just like we did before. Again, lay out your letters, have an idea. Now the hello is really going to be too long even for the slimline panel or it's gonna be right at that eight and a half. So I found alternating the height of my letters really makes it much more interesting and that is going to allow for some fun play of how to tuck my fish and the coral and the starfish around my card. For this card I did not stamp my greeting first. There are coordinating dies for some of the greetings in both this stamp set and nautical messages. There just wasn't one for the sentiment I wanted to use for the Ahoy card. So for this one, I will stamp my greeting on a separate piece of cardstock and die cut it and then attach that to the card. It's really just kind of dependent upon the card design. I could have stamped the greeting right on the background, but I kind of liked it stamped on a separate piece of paper, die cut, and popped up with foam. Now, I did make a small error. Um, like, I think I adhered everything too far to the left. I left way too much room on the right, just exactly what I told you not to do. So I am going to peel up that letter L and move the L. Um, it did pull up some of the paper underneath. I am able to disguise that when I adhere my fish, but I just... Full disclosure, it happens. I always like to be really transparent with you guys about when things don't go exactly right and when things kind of get, you know, boogered up <laughs> because it happens. It happens to all of us. So I peeled off my letter and then I'm just like peeling down my foam and you can see it pulled some of the cardstock up and I was like, darn it. But I, it's not terrible in this case and I really figured it's some, one of those things I can disguise. So I just grabbed some new foam for my letter and we will try again. We're gonna shift it over just a little bit. It didn't need to be a lot, but it does need to be maybe, I don't know, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And I really had trouble getting this guy straight. Maybe it was just that letter. <laughs> If you ever have trouble getting it straight, I do like to kind of tip my cardstock the other direction often. It will show you where you've maybe gone wrong. There we go. So let me know in the comments. Um, Hero Arts has these awesome large die cut letters and also the die cut numbers. I have done videos with both of those. I love them. Do you guys like these? I love big numbers, big letters. I think that they can just be used in so many different ways on your cards. So we wanna start with the largest images first and I wanna kind of create that one grouping like I did for the Ahoy card. So that's going to kind of fall in the middle of this design. We're gonna do our coral, we're gonna kind of tuck our fish around it and then we're gonna have fish popping out from some of the other letters. I did choose to maybe not use one or two, I think, fish that I colored. I'll just save those for something else. Um, ultimately, as I was looking at it, I really didn't find somewhere I wanted to add those remaining fish. So I just left them off of the design. The clownfish are my favorite in this, um, of course. It, I felt like we were, you know, <laughs> designing a Finding Nemo. <laughs> 
type of design, uh, but I loved that. So I've laid it out, kind of getting an idea. That yellow fish does go away. I just, I didn't like it. I, I felt like it was too much. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp your fantastic with the nautical color of ink right here. Die cut that, and then we're going to kind of secure everything. Now, because these images have eyes, one thing I always like to do when I'm completely done um, designing is to take a black jelly roll pen and add that detail back in and make the eyes pop. I think that's really important here is to make the fish faces you know, the best you can be. Any kind of image, any kind of critter or whatever that has eyes, I always like to do that. So again, using a combination of foam or glue, depending on where the images fall, we're going to start building our scene. Here's Nemo. Nemo and then Nemo's dad's down below. That's kind of what I was figuring. So we're going to have this fish kind of coming out from the letter O, which I loved. We have our little starfish. That's gonna kind of tuck into the letter L here. And then I just, I don't like this sentiment. I feel like down at the end, it was an afterthought. So we're going to tuck it more right here where the majority of our scene is taking place. Let's add there we go. And tucking your images partway underneath and then partway on top adds to the interest of the design. Just like before, the final things we're going to do for this card, we're going to attach it to our pre-cut and scored card base from Simon Says Stamp. We're going to add some blue enamel dots um, this time I am using the Hero Arts Translucent Aqua Enamel Dots. I love these things so much. And again, here's that black jelly roll pen. And I it instantly makes the eyes pop. And I did scribble on my card base. You can see it there over on the left side to just make sure that my jelly roll pen was working well before taking it to my image. I'm covering that scribble up with this panel. Sometimes I do that. The recipient won't know, only you and I know that I did that. I like to use the sharp poking tool tip from my tool to pick up my enamel dots and put them in place. I love this tool from Simon Says Stamp. I use it all of the time for this. So we're just going to grab these. And in this case, we're gonna make it kind of look like bubbles coming up from the fish. And you could have done this with the clear droplets as well, but I like the little pop of blue in this case. And we're just gonna use a diff you know, different combinations and sizes of these, some on the letters, some on the backgrounds, etc. Just kind of coming up from our fish and then we'll pop even a couple down by our sentiment to even it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the set of two DIY, DIY, DIY sentiment cards featuring Hero Arts stamps, dies, and stencils. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel, click that 
like button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new video. Thanks for watching!